Hello everyone, today we are updating our 2015 guide to Google Classroom with these 2017 updates. For a more comprehensive look at Google Classroom, check out my new book found in the link in the description below. Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to be doing an update video from our 2015's Google Classroom guide. In this video, we are going to go through new features that have been added since then. So if you haven't watched that first video, I recommend you first go watch that video. You see an annotation on the screen or in the I card above, and then come back and then see the new changes that have been updated from that previous video. So starting here on Google Classroom's home screen, the first thing is when you create a new class, there is now a section to add a subject. So this allows you to add it at the very beginning rather than in the about section. And when you add it, it will appear below the name of the class rather than the section. So here on the right, you see with it a section and on the left, you see it with the subject instead. This makes it so that your title does not necessarily have to include your subject. You can if you would like, uh, but you could then instead name it Mr. Zhang's class, or you can name it something else that doesn't have to be with the actual subject. From there, this is the only real change that is visible on this particular screen. We're going to go into uh, the Google class to see some of the main changes. The first is on the left side, you're going to notice there's no more class code. There's this new section topics. So without that class code, that class code is now only found in the student section and is found in the left sidebar rather than at the top where it used to be in the old version. So the left sidebar still has reset and delete in there just fine. There's also this new guardian email summary, so we're going to come back to that at the end of the video on the new features that includes. So just going back to the stream, so we've already talked about the left sidebar uh, with the topics, but I just want to explain this a little bit more. This is like units in your class, so when you add topics, you can then filter your stream posts based on these topics. I can go ahead and click on the add topic button, and then that will allow me to add these topics, which can later on be added into the posts. So here I'm just going to start with an example. Our first one is going to be the introduction. Maybe some of the posts are based on the introduction. Then the second one that we're going to add is we're going to talk about call it Google Classroom. From there, if I have pre-existing posts that I want to categorize, I can include that in there. But just to show that since this isn't first categorized already, if I go ahead and click on Google Classroom, it's actually going to show that there's no post found. Same thing if I clicked on introduction. So if I want to add these topics to pre-existing ones, I hit the kebab menu, hit edit, and then now there's a section for me to add topics. So here I can add that this is a Google Classroom assignment, I can add that's Google Classroom, and then hit save. Also in the topic section, I can create a new topic if necessary. So I hit save, and now I can see it in the actual card itself, but if I go to the Google Classroom section, I will now see that it is there, but in the introduction section, there's no posts that are visible. So when you have lots and lots of cards, it just makes it easier to find specific cards based on topic. So that is most of the navigational changes that have happened in Google Classroom to get around. We also now want to move into some of the changes to the actual posts. So the first thing that I'm going to show is in the announcement, but this is for all posts, is that nothing has visually changed. But here, if I put in a welcome announcement before in posts, I could only post or save. Now in the sub menu, there's also schedule. So when I go ahead and schedule, I can create this post first and then have it automatically post at a specific time when uh, this is an announcement is ready. So I can, if I go ahead and hit this particular schedule button, it'll give me a pop-up that gives me the option to choose the date and the time for this to be posted. This really makes it a lot easier to 
first plan your posts before they are going to get sent out. Because as a reminder, whenever anything is posted, an email goes out to the students. Have all of those things timed well together uh, so that the app, the emails, and the Google Classroom all works well. If you schedule the posts, the students will get the notifications on their phone or in their emails at the same time that they come into class. So oftentimes I either do these uh, the day before or even the Sunday before the school week so that they're done out of the way and then I don't have to worry about scheduling these particular posts throughout the week. So it is definitely a time saver. I can still see all the saved posts at the top. If I go ahead and edit them, I can edit the particular schedule time as well as uh, at the t right beside it, there's an X that I can click if I want to cancel the schedule and have it post right away. So that's a new feature with scheduling. Very useful for you to be able to use in order to pre-plan your posts and then have them sent out at a specific time. The next one we're going to skip over and we're going to go to question. The main new thing in question is before we said that this wasn't really a poll thing, you couldn't really give them options, it was only a single sentence. But now there is the option at the bottom left to switch between short answer and multiple choice. So you can now make this into a poll of sorts on your classroom in order to get some quick feedback. So here I'm just making a quick yes or no question. And then here I'm going to just have it ask right away. And the great thing with this particular feature, uh, yes, I can schedule it, but I am just going to go ahead and uh, ask it right away, is that these options will appear inside of the stream itself. You'll also see I did give it a topic for Google Classroom. So I've asked the question, so here it is uh, in the stream for me, but I'm just going to switch to student perspective and here at the top it says, oh, it's been updated, so I'm going to show. And here is now the question with the options directly in the card right away. Students can just click, hit submit, and once they've submitted it, they will actually see a live feed. So here only one person has replied and they've replied yes, and we can see that with the darker gray section. No one has said no yet, and you can disable this feature if you want. Just going to the second student and doing the same thing and we see now everyone has responded with the uh, with the yes and no one has with the no so that is the new question section and i can still go inside as a teacher and click on the title and from there see also the totals themselves as well as i can click on individual students on the left side and from there be able to see what individual students have chosen. So that's also another way that if you want to take a look and see what students are selecting. So that is the new question type, the multiple choice here in questions. And then from there, I just wanna talk about the last post type, the assignments type. So with the assignments type, nothing really major has changed with the assignments, but it has integrated a lot better with Google Forms. Now, obviously, I don't have time to really sh talk about everything about Google Forms, but previously, if you want to use Google Forms as a formative or summative assessment, it was quite difficult. Now it is a lot easier to do. So I can go ahead and create an assignment. I've already created the Google Form, so here I am just going to give it a title, and then I'm just going to go ahead and find that particular form. Uh, once again, here I am going to go and give it a topic. This one's an introduction. The reason being is because this form is a really simple one, but it's just to ask the students about their favorite color. So I go ahead, hit add, and then I can go ahead and assign. So while I would like to use a form instead of a question is that forms allow me to have more complex questions as well as that they could be checkboxes, lists, they can do paragraphs, they can do a mix, and they can have more than one question. So I've gone ahead and assigned this particular form. Once again, I'm going to switch to the student view and update the stream and they're going to see it and they can open it and click on the link for the Google form. It will open in a brand new tab and they can just go ahead and fill out the form and hit submit. Previously, when this happened, they wouldn't be able to have it linked to Google Classroom. Here it now says Open Assignment, and in Open Assignment, you'll see that it is already submitted in Google Classroom. Previously, it would not be submitted in Google Classroom, and then the students would have to come back into Google Classroom, hit the Submit button, or else it would forever not be submitted in Google Classroom. So that was a really big integration between Google Forms 
and Google Classroom, and it just adds on with the new features of Google Forms, where in Google Forms, you can also get uh, quizzes and a quiz feature as well. So here I'm just doing it once again for the second student as well. So just going through the process again, uh, either clicking the open on the top right or even here just clicking on the title of the form itself. And then from there, it will go ahead and open and once again, fill out that particular form. So the other thing since I'm here is now that I have a few things that are different topics, so I can go ahead and now click on the Google Classroom topic and we'll see only the ones that were topicked with Google Classroom are done. And the ones that are done with the introduction are in introduction. And this was the student view that you saw it in. So same thing, whether it is teacher or student, you can use those topics. Okay, coming back to uh, the teacher view. So we've talked about the new features in the stream and the different blog posts. So from here, uh, the other thing that I wanna mention is that there's new sorting features for assignments. You can now sort by last name or first name. It's not only by who's done and who is not done. Uh, here, I'm, I'm just gonna quickly uh, change the point value. So this was in the first video. So change the point value. I'm just gonna give some arbitrary points here. So four for the first one and one for the second person, even though that student didn't finish. Well, I guess maybe they breathed on the computer and they got a point, something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and return this assignment and this is a new feature as well. You can give a private comment that will populate every single student's private comment feed for this particular assignment. Instead of doing it one at a time, I'm gonna do this particular message for both students. And here there's a small glitch, so uh, it just blacked out, but here now you can see both of them uh, have that particular comment in, and I only had to do it once. It was just the black glitch had to be for refreshing the screen. So coming back from uh, the main screen, the other thing that happens in assignments now is that uh, there is an ability to export these results. So the settings gear in the top right, I can copy all the, Google, all the information into a Google Sheet or I can download them as a CSV file, which can then be opened in Excel. So here's just downloading that I can double click and open to Excel. But since we're Google, we're gonna go ahead and instead copy them to a Google Sheet. So they'll open a brand new sheet and here I can see student one, student two, as well as all the assignments in this class and what their score is for each of them. This does only do returned assignments and unfortunately it doesn't live update. So you will have to click that opening Google Sheets every single time you want a brand new version of your marks to then copy or export into your other grading system. But this does allow you to very easily be able to copy those information out without having to go to every individual assignment to get each student's results. So that is, I believe the last thing that I want to show about assignments is just how you can now export all that information out really easily. So with that, that is all the major changes that happens in Google Classroom. The last thing that I wanna to get to is with guardian emails. So this allows you to communicate the assignments to parents and guardians. So first and foremost, it has to be turned on in the student section. So here I can go ahead and flip the switch and I'll get a pop-up that says, do I wanna do this for all of my classes? I have the option to say yes or no. So here I'm gonna say yes, we're gonna have it so that it is for all my classes, I'm gonna add classes. So now all of my classes have this turned on, which is great. This now adds a section in the center of each student on the list in the main section for me to invite the guardians. Now, the thing is that you can use a non-Google account, but it does get a little weird. So here I am going to add a non-Google account and then you can see what happens. I'm gonna click on invite guardian. Here I am gonna just type in an email. I do have the option to add another email before I hit invite. So there's the add another, there's invite. But here I just have one to give the example. So I'm gonna go ahead, say invite. You'll see that just has the email and invited in parentheses. And it'll stay like that until the parent actually accepts this invitation. So going to that particular parent screen, then they need to accept. And once again, this is for a non-Google account. So it's going to be more complex than for a Google account. So switching over to the parent email, here we'll see once I refresh the screen that there's the email invitation. I can go ahead and click it because there's security. The actual email looks a little weird without images, but there is the blue accept button 
option. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and it's going to be like, oh no, you don't actually have uh, a Google Classroom account. So I can either sign in to create, uh, to link this to another Google account I have, or I can go ahead and create a new Google account and link this email with that new account. So here I'm just going to speed through uh, inputting the information here for a brand new account. And then once all of that's done, it's basically good to go. It's really there just so that it can link the third party email to a Google account so that they can actually access the settings. I know it's a little convoluted, but it does generally work. So here I am verifying that new account is being created. So all those steps were done. And then now the parent can finally hit this continue at the bottom. And then from there, they'll be able to see uh, the settings for receiving notifications from Google Classroom and all their assignments. So I've gone ahead and hit continue. Here are the settings. The first thing that I can choose is the frequency of the email settings. It will list all my students, so all the children, if there's multiple children with the system. I can choose weekly, daily, or no summaries for each of my individual students, uh, individual children, as well as change time zones if necessary. So in order to get to this particular page again, uh, the parent would just need to go to classroom.google.com and then from there log in again with their email address and password, and then it will give them their settings. Then on the actual screen for the teacher to know, it will change the email to that guardian's actual first and last name. So then you actually know that they have accepted it. So that is all the brand new things from the last video. I hope that you've learned something new. Uh, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you next time. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. We will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.